tell I haven't gotten a haircut in a year, like an actual haircut. I've been cutting my own bangs. I actually cut my bangs um, exactly a year ago, basically. I cut them in uh, April of uh, 2020 and they've been going pretty strong. Um, I lost my hair cutting scissors and so they're a little bit long at the moment, but we're just sort of dealing with it. Hi, and welcome back to another video. I am Kelsey, and if you're new here, this channel is all about art and oil painting and my journey to become a full-time artist. Today, we're going to be doing something that I haven't done in a little while, which is a vlog. I am going to be walking you guys through some paintings that I've been working on recently and talking about where I want this channel to go in the future, how I'm planning on my art career, and just generally the musings of someone who is going to graduate college in two weeks and has no uh, forking idea what she's going to do with her life after that. I'm not stressed, you're stressed. What? Stress? I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's vodka right there. Yep. And on a more serious note, I am actually giving my future career a lot of thought. I have thought about it a bunch and it's a really big source of stress for me and I want to sort of tell you that if you're going through the same thing, I'm here for you. I know what it's like. I am currently going through this and it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. And I want to give you some words of reassurance and tell you that we're gonna get this figured out and we're gonna be okay and everything's gonna be fine. I know that I really need to hear that right now and I hope that you don't need to hear that right now and I hope you're doing way better than I am. So this vlog is gonna be pretty, pretty manic, pretty disorganized. I have a bunch of footage over the past few weeks I need to sort through and figure out and just generally organize into some kind of cohesive video because I didn't upload on Tuesday like I said that I would and I am sorry about that. I just wasn't really feeling it, you know? If you're new here, I typically upload a video every single week and then I also have occasionally a vlog on every other Friday. I have not been doing that recently but I really wanna get back into it. So this is sort of the kickstart of that effort and hopefully I will be more consistent in the future once I graduate and that is um, at least something that I'm hoping. So yeah, all right, super long intro, very sorry about that and with that let's go into the vlog. I just finished class. Um, my advanced ethical theory class is always a really good time. The professor is always super kind and nice and caring and I've had him since my first year of college actually. So the college that I go to does like this intro thing where you like to have this first year course and the professor sort of teaches you how to write college papers and things and he was my FYC professor and he's such a gem. I, I like, He's so good. And today we were talking about moral skepticism and it was a really interesting discussion talking about how like is morality relative, is it objective, is it subjective, and like talking about all these different things. And it was a good time. It sort of uplifted my spirits a little bit. It was nice. Um, and yeah, so I have some reading that I have to do for that class so that I can write a paper. And I don't think I want to jump into that right away. I think I might want to work on some baking projects for a little bit just to make myself some food and go back to reading and then hopefully finish off the day with some drawing or painting or something. So yeah, um, pretty chill day all in all. I don't have a tremendous amount of things to do. If I end up feeling, if I end up feeling really productive, I will probably work on website coding things. Front-end web development is sort of my career fallback as I sort of try to make art my full-time thing. So front-end web development is sort of a thing that I'm really passionate about and interested in. It's a good creative outlet for me, but it is sort of the way that I am trying to make money in the meantime. So yeah, I did just have a prospective employer totally ghost me though after they basically offered me the job in the interview and that was, um, it was very not nice and really disheartening, but um, yeah, you know, we're moving forward. Just have to continue applying for things and hopefully something will work out.
It is Saturday, April 24th, and I have not painted in probably like two weeks, I think. And I feel super rusty. I feel super, super rusty. I feel like sort of disenchanted with the whole endeavor right now. And above all else, I just sort of keep wishing that I was at a higher skill level that I am and that keeps like discouraging me from practicing, but like, that's so dumb. The only way that I can get better is if I practice. I talked about this literally a few weeks ago. It's so ridiculous. So what I want to do today is just something just to sort of kickstart my abilities to sort of let loose a little bit. I want to set absolutely no expectations on the result of this oil painting study thing. Um, I just want to practice. I just want to sort of feel the paint and the brush in my hand again. Over Kelsey here. Hi there. I just wanted to take the time to chat about my process as we go through these two paintings and also to talk about my future plans for this channel and my art career as a whole. We're starting out with the still life painting. It's a gorgeous reference photo of these pink lilies in this copper looking metal vase with some fabric and some fruit. The lilies are definitely the focal point of this painting and the element that I pay the most attention to. Capturing their freshness, the soft texture of the petals, and the gentle gradation between the bright magenta of the center and the white as we hit the edge of the petals was a really tough challenge. And I unfortunately wasn't able to finish this piece in this vlog, and that was because I made a few really, really bad mistakes throughout the process. The reference photo, which is courtesy of New Masters Art Academy, is very dark with dim lighting and a black background. I end up painting it true to the photo, but I really regret that looking back. Sticking with the dark background and the dim lighting makes this piece feel not true to me as an individual artist, and the muted colors are a significant departure from my usual colorful style. I'll actually end up reworking this piece next week, so if watching me troubleshoot this painting and redoing whole sections of it interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Overall though, this painting achieved what I wanted it to, which was just to get me back into the practice of painting. And now that I've given you a little bit of background into what we're doing at the moment, I want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about what I mentioned in the intro of this video, which was my art career and what the heck I'm going to do after I graduate college in two weeks, which is terrifying absolutely terrifying, the most terrifying thought that I have had in ages. So as you can probably tell by the subscriber count on my videos and the view count and everything about me as a creator is that I am not monetized. I am a microscopic YouTuber and if you look at my Instagram, I just have over 2,000 followers and I'm not particularly active on that platform, unfortunately, um, mostly because I think Instagram is a scary, intimidating place. So I... I'm not in a position right now where I'm making enormous amounts of money from my artwork or my content, I guess, if you want to call it that as a whole, but I am, fingers crossed, hoping that I will be able to make that a reality in the future. I am working every single day, every single week to put out content and develop my skills as an artist, and I'm hoping to launch a shop sometime this summer. I'm not exactly sure when, and... This might be complicated by me moving to New York City in a few months, but um, yeah, I'm moving to New York City. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend has a job there, and and assuming that we don't break up in the next few months, uh, I will be I will be moving there with him. And I think it's going to be a super exciting opportunity, and enormous enormous privilege. And I am so so lucky to be with him and to like have the opportunity to move to this amazing international world class city. But New York City is very expensive, and while I work towards making art my full-time gig, I am fully expecting that web design, specifically front-end web design and website sort of mock-ups, will be my intermediary day job. Pivoting back just briefly to what's happening on screen, I am taking off the still life painting, and we're actually going to start painting some tomatoes now. These tomatoes are just a thing that we had in the kitchen, and I 
pair them up with the afternoon sunlight and these absolutely gorgeous olive green placemats that I gifted to my boyfriend's mom for Christmas. There was just something about the afternoon light on these tomatoes that was really compelling to me and I thought they looked very bright and interesting and super colorful and what better way to practice oil painting than to work on just a really quick painting that I can get done in one sitting. So we are scraping off the dried paint from our still life piece and getting started on these cherry tomatoes. There are three tomatoes in this painting and they have these really interesting shadow patterns on them that I found really interesting to paint. Lots of different reds and oranges and I thought it would be a really interesting sort of study in color mixing and all of the different warm tones that you see in this piece. I also wanted to practice a more impressionistic style of painting using lots of broken color and just allowing myself to be more comfortable with laying a brush stroke down and leaving it as is. So we're starting off with just blocking in these cherry tomatoes using my nine dot grid method, which I talk about in my how to paint a landscape painting video, which I will link up above. And those nine dots at the midpoints really just help me block in all of these different elements and to get the proportions mostly accurate. Now, there are a few things that I mess up a little bit, but I don't think it's super noticeable. And actually I sort of like it the way that it looks right now than it does in the reference photo. So yeah, I'm just doing a little bit of a sketch with some oil paint thinned out with my trusty lavender spike oil solvent, which is a natural non-toxic solvent. It's a little bit different than a medium. It thins paints out in a more sort of pleasing manner. It doesn't leave them super glossy or goopy to work with and it allows the paint to dry to a sort of chalky finish if you use it a little bit too much, which I think is sort of an interesting effect to go for. It makes the paints really pleasing to work with and if you follow artists like El Payafe, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, then you'll notice that in his work he sort of relies a lot on solvents to thin the paints out and sort of level the brush strokes a little bit, make things much smoother and easier to work with, and that's what I like a lot about solvents in general. And the first part of this painting that I'm blocking in is the super dark shadows that these cherry tomatoes are leaving. Adding in the darkest parts of the painting first helps your eye to sort of ignore the white of the paper and more accurately assess values as you go on. So if I were to so if I were to work from light to dark, then I probably would notice that the painting would appear kind of flat and that the lights would be considerably darker than I actually probably wanted them to be. So going in with the dark parts first allows me to get a more accurate look at sort of what the painting should look like and how I can fix it going forward. Now that you guys have a pretty accurate grasp on what's happening, let's go back to our discussion on art careers and planning and all of that good stuff. And I will continue right from where we left off, which is talking about web design. Lucky for me, I actually really like web design and I think that it's a huge extension of the sort of creative process as a whole. I think of creativity and art making in general as a situation in which you're trying to enact this vision and you have this idea in your head of how something is supposed to look, how you want it to look, and all of the steps in between you having that vision, having that idea, and realizing it are just various stages of problem solving. As far as my art career planning goes, it is an enormous amount of things on my to-do list and every single day I am slowly, slowly working to tick off each one. So for example, in order to launch my online shop, I have to research packaging. I have to research print shops where I'm going to get my prints made. Am I going to have them made at some local place? Am I going to have them made and then shipped to me? How is that going to work? What kind of paper am I going to use? And then I have to get my artwork photographed or scanned and that is a whole problem on its own. I've really struggled to photograph my artwork by myself without any glare. As an oil painter, that is a very specific problem that is difficult to solve. At least I've struggled to solve it. And then you have my website. I need to code my website. I need to come up with some branding for myself as an artist. I need to develop a cohesive portfolio that fits said website or really vice versa, right? You want your website to fit your portfolio, not the other way around. But 
As you can tell from my videos and the content that I put out every single week, my content isn't super cohesive. I'm an artist and I make art, but aside from that, I just paint so many different things and I don't really have a style right now, so to speak. And that's one thing that I feel like I have to have before I can really launch an online shop or website. And maybe that's false. And maybe this is just, I don't know, my insecurity coming into play, but I feel like I need to have myself like really figured out before I feel comfortable sharing that with people. And so, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and there are so many things that I have to do and it's, yeah, it's a lot. But eventually I'm hoping that in the next few months I'll feel comfortable enough that I can launch my online shop and hopefully by then I will have mastered the art of having a cohesive presence on Instagram and maybe by then I'll even be monetized on YouTube. That would be great. Every single week I'm researching keywords and I'm trying to make search focused content so that I appear in searches, so that people can find my content, so that I grow here on YouTube on this platform. And growing on YouTube is an enormously complicated problem and I feel like some people just like make it super quickly and other people have to grind for months and months and years and years and it looks like I'm going to be grinding and you know that that's just the way that it is sometimes. All right, I feel like I've talked for absolute ages. Uh, so I'm going to leave you guys to some music and if you stick around until the very, very end, you'll get a cute little surprise. here? Wait, you watched all of that? You watched all of that? The whole thing? The whole thing? You didn't click off at the two minute mark? Like everyone does in my analytics? You didn't? You watched the whole thing? Damn. Okay. I'm impressed. You go. Okay. Okay. If you want to, you can hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, otherwise, I have a bunch of other videos that you can watch if you want. Uh, you can also hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. Um, wow, I'm so proud of you. Okay, I hope you have a great rest of your day. You just made mine. That's so... Look at you.